Oh, that was for Susie. Super. We are live. Welcome back to a Celtic State of Mind. I understand you'll all be keeping your eyes on the action, which is fully understandable. We've just won again. Uh, we have just won the League Cup thanks to Kyogo and others. You will be enjoying the celebrations, I'm pretty sure. And I'm joined by Kevin McCluskey and Liam Carrigan to dissect the entire game. But we'll start off with the second half, guys. I mean, I'll tell you something, right? Um, I was getting messages from my missus, who's obviously watching this elsewhere, and she was stressing out. I said, you know what? They're going to come out at us in the second half. Ten minutes, the pressure. But then we'll score a second goal, make a few substitutions, everything's good. And that happened. I called it. But there just seemed to be something changed when they scored their, their goal. It gave them the belief. And I'll tell you what, we can go on about the character that we've shown, the performances of the likes of Alistair Johnson, who I thought was outstanding. He was exceptional. But there's two or three wee bits in there that, by the way, we're not being negative. We've just won the cup. But we will talk about it. So give us your take on that second half, first of all. Kevin McCluskey. Well, I've literally just come back out from behind the sofa. <laughs> it was... Uh... Watching a lot of that with the with the hands over the eye because I don't, I don't know what happened after we scored the goal. We were I think we were really in control up until then. We get the second goal, and then for some reason we kind of felt the pieces a bit. And I don't know if it was just because Rangers came out at us a bit more because they had to. We started to make sloppy mistakes and errors, and they had a few chances. Um. I don't know. <laughs> Is it going to be one of those games that we'll watch back later and realise that we were always in control? You know, we've seen those games before. It's the emotion. And, uh, yeah, and totally it's the, get it's that. the emotion at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm not actually sure Joe Hart made too many saves for all the pressure that Rangers had and were putting on us. I don't think he mm. had too many saves to make. That might have been down to a bit of poor finish and a poor control on their behalf as well. But yeah, there was, there was a good 10-15 minute spell in that second half where it was not comfortable viewing but somehow we stuck through it the last five minutes or so again I thought we were back on top should have had two goals in injury time 100%. two massive misses mm -hmm. um, but yeah one of the players that you've commented on there or highlighted Alistair Johnson was immense it was exceptional was a few moments because we were, we had it on the, the screen share thing, so I could see you as well, and you're giving it like almost the Chris Iyer celebration <laughs> after a couple of these tackles. I played in the fence, mate. Immense. I appreciate these things, <laughs> you know what I mean? You've got to. You've got to, because uh, uh, he was he was brilliant. As much as Moy was maybe man of the match of, of the first half, Johnson gets a lot of the credit for the second half. He was excellent. Totally, get, totally agree with that. We have, we're going to walk away with that trophy again. So it's all smiles at this end. Is, can you all hear me okay, eh? Liam, can you hear me okay? Yep, can hear you fine. Brilliant. I'm a wee bit croaky. I'm going to pick up, first of all, on, on the Moy the Moy thing that you said, Kevin. Um, I'm watching the, the, the post-match. I always love watching the post-match um, because I love to see, you know, the, the reactions of the likes of Callum McGregor, who, you know, this season, <clears throat> if everything goes our way and it, and we've got one out of one, he's going to be moving into the uh, that that category of uh, most decorated selves. He's going to be right in, it, I think, the top three at that point. And you can see how much it means to him. Uh, a boy that's came through the ranks, it's so important. I've always said this, not just because I'm a traditionalist, it's so important to have two or three guys like Callum McGregor in your team um, because it means something. You know, it's he's not, a, he's not one of these guys who's a careerist, Liam, who's just coming for two or three years and using Celtic as a stepping stone. So I love watching the, the, the post-match. Um, and again, I think that McGregor had his usual commanding game. Um, and I take what Kevin says on board. Sometimes it's hard to see that in the moment because you're you're so emotional and you're so concerned that they might pull themselves back into the game, Liam. The thing is, like, to to win a to win a cup, to win any cup, you've got to show that you're the best footballing team, but you've also got to show that you've got the the strongest bottle, the most robust guts, if you like. To me, Celtic showed both of those today. In the first half, we showed that we're a better... Well, for about the first hour, we showed that we are the superior footballing team. In that last 25 minutes or so, we showed that we had more courage, we had more determination, and we drove that over the line, despite, you know, it being a bit 
a bit up and down at times. We we got it over the line, and in the end, we could have had more goals, but for one, I'll give credit to the keeper. One was a really good save. The other one, Haksibanovic, um was was a bad miss, but he did brilliant to even get into that position. I think he was superb when he came on. It was as um basically f- filling the Maeda role as like the out ball for us. Him and Abada both put in a hell of a shift when they came on. Um, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, ne- neither of them did much in terms of like getting a goal. You know, they didn't get any goals or anything. And all was the same, but leading the line. And as long as the ball's up at that end, the other that other mob can he score. So, um, you know, I think that was that's that's again, it's something that probably won't be looked at too much in the post match analysis in the press. But I think Haksibanovic, Abada, and O all played a massive role when they came on. Iwata as well, just kind of shoring up the midfield. Um, we definitely lost something when Aaron Moy went off. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, that's you know he was playing so well in that first hour that no player can sustain that level for ninety minutes. Not you know, especially not a player who's over thirty. Um, but he really, he really was outstanding, and I just think I I don't you know people are going to say oh we were rubbish in the second half no. I don't. I, I just don't see that. No. I think it was about character. It was about determination, and we showed that we've got that as well as the skill. Mm-hmm. No, I I totally agree with that. You know, I think that we scored it the second goal after fifty five. I was just laughing there because Jota had the the loudspeaker for uh, the capo for the Green Brigade for a wee moment there. He was loving it. Um, <laughs> they scored a second goal. We are on, on fifty five minutes. They they put one back after sixty three. I'm going to make a point here. It'll be interesting to hear what you think. So, you know, we've already got O'Reilly and Abada um, stripped, ready to come on. The decision's been made. And we're taking off Moy. Now, I thought Moy was fantastic today. I really did. I thought he was brilliant. And you know what? If you only get 60 mil- uh, minutes out of him, but that's what you get, I'm all right with that because you can call on somebody from the bench. But we're taking him off and, and he's ready to come off after 61 minutes. But we give away that free kick and we allow the free kick to be taken without taking Arden Moy off. And I thought Moy was a wee bit, I don't know if he was done, knackered or whatever, but he was a wee bit slow to react to the ball coming in. I'm not criticising him, I thought he was superb, but it's just these tiny wee margins, Kevin. You know, had we made that change and the likes of Awata comes on, Awata rather, comes on and he's fresher and, and he's, you know, he's just fresh on at the park, it might have been completely different. But I did I did think there was a wee bit of a boost uh, for Rangers at that moment, but it probably only lasted about 15 minutes. Two of the best uh, chances in the match came to Celtic in the last couple of minutes after uh, the 90 minutes had already gone. So, Kevin, I think that it's now time to enjoy the fact that we've won the trophy. We've shown again that we are superior, you know, in all departments when it comes down to Celtic against Rangers. Well, you know, up until that second goal, we blew them off the park, if you ask me. We showed our, you know, our standards and our quality was vastly superior to Rangers. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think Liam's analysis was probably spot on to the second half and how it all played out. But yeah, I mean, we, we, we spoke about this before the game. If we, made it, if we made it a football match, we were always going to win because technically we're a better team. Um, and at the moments in the game when it was a football match, we were on top. Our football at times today was brilliant. The way we were able to keep the ball, move it from side to side and stretch them from time to time. We just needed the break in the first half of uh, getting in behind them. I mean, we got out once, Taylor sets up the goal. A few other times it just didn't quite go our way, but we were always in control in that first half. Mm-hmm. And then in the second half, I, th- I felt, again, for that first 15 minutes, we looked really good again. McGregor was awesome in the first 15 minutes. As we spoke about Moy winning every loose ball in the first half, McGregor was doing the same at the start of the second half. He was the man that was on top of things, winning the ball back, dictating the tempo again. Wasn't really a surprise when we got the second goal. Uh, great pass by Moy as well for that one, to set it up, to set up the chance. Hatate as well, who I think needed a big performance in a Glasgow derby. 
did well because he could have taken the shot on, I think, but he showed a bit of class and composure there when he squares it across and Kyogo just does what Kyogo does for that range. He's not going to miss. He's getting the whole team then, up. McGregor's getting the whole team up to the podium before he lifts the trophy. I'm, I don't know if everybody's watching at the same oh. time as me, but um, no, you're right. You're right about Hatati. I thought he was he was yeah. tremendous today. Um, I, I thought he was. And I, I'd actually watched back the semi-final from last season during the week. And uh, the two players that stood out for different reasons was um, Maeda for his work rate. He was excellent mm-hmm. in that game mm-hmm. again, just as he did today when he's closing everyone down and hustling and harrying and uh, causing errors just by his work rate. And Hatate was the disappointment because he was he was really poor in that game. He was losing pretty much all his duels in the midfield. And I, I really wanted a big performance from him today. And I think we got it. I think we got a pretty good performance out of him. And he's... Again, as I say, that composure, just to square it instead of taking the shot on, wins us the game, essentially. After that, when we start to drop out the game a bit, it's only because we couldn't we couldn't get our foot in the ball and we couldn't play football. But Liam was spot on with what we did then, which we showed courage and we showed determination and we showed that we've got fight about us, which is something that you don't normally associate with us because we're always on the ball, we're always playing beautiful football. But actually, when we need to put in a back to the world performance, we can do it. And I thought staff felt apart from two mistakes that he made around about the 75, 80 minute mark, it was really good. Carter Vickers was winning everything. Johnson was just immense. The midfield, every one of them put in a shift. And it was the same up front again, like Haksabanovic coming on. Um, you know, I was I was a bit wary about Maida coming off. Haksabanovic mm-hmm. came on, put in the same level of, of performance, the same high you know, work rate that we expect from Maeda. And, you know, at the end of the day, when you look back at it, we've won the cup and we completely deserved it. And the balance of play, it's, it is mm-hmm. a deserved one. You know what what happens, OK, and I'm just looking at the trophy again, you know, pass down the, the, the line here, down the squad. And there's certain players who haven't done this yet for Celtic. So it's part of this journey that I'm just taking us on whereby I just think there's a galvanising effect of winning trophies, winning silverware as a team. There's players in that squad where this is the first time that's happened to them. I think McGregor's shouting for the gaffer to get to get the trophy. And here he comes, the big man, Big Ange, comes to get it. I mean, there, there really is a togetherness here about this team. You can tell. You can see it. Um, and I think, you know, there, there's a few special mentions. I've already mentioned Alistair Johnson. I thought, mm. you know, hands down, that's the best performance I've seen. Um, from Alistair Johnson. I sometimes feel sorry for unused subs in cup finals. i just seen Tony Ralston there. Tony Ralston's done nothing wrong at Celtic, has he? Yeah, he's lost his place in the team because Johnson's come in because uh, we knew we were losing Juranovic and he's turned out to be a fantastic player once he's got a game. The jersey's his. And with performances like today, he's not going to lose the jersey anytime soon. So I do feel sorry for the likes of Ralston. Um, but I thought Johnson was tremendous. Maeda, half-time, Liam. I'm going to throw this one over to you because I know that you're his number one fan. And the three of us were sitting here, not because we're football experts, by the way, because we get as much wrong as we get right. And we said, you know what? Keep him on. He'll come into a game. Uh, what he's given is is worth worthwhile. And he, he actually put in a really good performance in the second half. Yep. Yeah, and, uh, you know, his off-the-ball running created the space that allowed for that second goal again. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it... but. I think the the one thing that really showed today was the depth of our squad. When you look at the quality of the substitutions, you know, we I'm just looking here. We had, you know, in the second half coming on, Abada, O'Reilly, O, Iwata, Haksabanovic. I mean, all top, top class players. And, you know, Rangers had Ryan Jack, Todd Cantwell, you know. Um, it's not really, it's all about standards, isn't it, lads? It's all about standards. It's all about standards, it certainly is. You and... know, we've um, we've got Tomoki Iwata, uh, they'll be fighting for the Lavi water as we speak, so uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that just kind of says it all. Liam, did you prepare that? Did you prepare that, or is that just To be honest, that actually just came to me as I was just looking at Iwata there. I thought, oh, brilliant, superb. Um, and you know, 
we, we are looking at the, the game in its entirety and uh, we're absolutely delighted with the outcome of this. I was talking before the game in relation to how this affects the rest of the season. You know, we talk about momentum swings all the time. We talk about a galvanising kind of process where people are winning their first trophies, you know. So you look at people like um, even, you know, Hatati has not enjoyed a, Scot a Scottish Cup final last season. So this is his first Cup final. He's winning the Cup. Um, and I just think it's going to benefit us um, massively. I spoke just last night. I'm just going to name drop, you know, Martin O'Neill. I just asked Martin O'Neill last night about uh, the importance of him winning that. You remember the cup final against Kilmarnock, Kevin, um, where we go out and we win that League Cup. That's the first trophy of the season and the momentum, the springboard to success. And he agreed. He says it's absolutely huge. It's crucial. And I'm looking at the Celtic side and, um, you know, anything can happen. But I just think to myself, we've got it in us to win a treble here. And I know that you get a bit emotional after winning a cup and all that, but I don't mind saying it, Kevin McCluskey. I think that this this team is capable of doing that. I think so as well. I think they absolutely are. Um, we're nine points ahead in the league, which is a pretty healthy lead to have at the moment. We've only lost one game domestically all season. And, you know, touch wood and all that, I don't see that start changing drastically between now and the end of the campaign. On paper we are far and away the best team in the country. So if we can just keep on doing what we do, our treble is definitely within our, within our grasp. Um, and yeah, you, you talk about the momentum swings and all that. If we'd lost this game today, as I said before, I don't know how much it affects us in a sense, because I think we'd have the ability to bounce back and we keep on going. But it affects them a lot because they needed this. They needed to win something to have a trophy in the cabinet, to keep this kind of the myth of Michael Beale going about being the greatest coach that's ever graced the planet. And all is that, that his nonsense. first defeat, Kev? Is that his first defeat? Uh, that is his first defeat, yeah. indeed, yes. So, uh, is that, is that yeah. him not getting an England job then? Because I'd read this morning it was his for the taking. <laughs> Unbelievable, some of the stuff that's been coming out in the last week, Liam. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes you've got to check if it's a parody account. Um, often you've got to check if it's a parody account. No, but it, I totally, you know, I take it on board that whatever you see on a live broadcast on Axon, people can cast it up in the future if things don't go your way. But I, I totally get that it's a bold statement to make. Joe Fulham makes it as well. You've got to be looking at that, Liam. If you're a, a, a progressive club and you want to improve and you want to keep your best players at the club and you want to continue with this galvanisation effect that we're talking and, you know, success brings that, you've got to look ahead. I know Ange won't talk about it, but we're fans. We're allowed to talk about it, Liam. Do you know, historically, the League Cup has so often been the springboard to really, really memorable seasons for me as a Celtic supporter. You know, I think back to the Vim Janssen season winning that, the League Cup in November of that year gave us the belief that we then went on to beat Rangers at New Year and then we went on and won the league. You know, and I think the League Cup played a huge part in that. Mm -hmm. You know, the the Kilmarnock Cup final, 2001. My my first ever Cup final as a Celtic fan, actually. Um, and uh, yeah, going, going to actually going to a Cup final. And uh, it was... Uh, you know, again, that was the springboard that took us on to the treble. Um, the Invincible season, again, same thing. You know, I really think that this could be the springboard to a treble and possibly a decent tilt at Europe next season as well, because that is the one thing that Ange has still got to tick off in his box. He wants to get the Scottish Cup, because he's not got that yet, and he wants to get a good run in Europe. And I think today is where it all begins you know you're talking about the Scottish Cup I totally get that we've got a very hard uh, encounter coming up and I don't underestimate that in the slightest but I think that you've got to be progressive you've got to be ambitious and that is what Ange Postacoglu is um, Lloyd Jepson Ange Postacoglu wins trophies uh, Jim Kerr uh, not the Simple Minds one, by the way, but Jim Kerr, that's what champions are made of. Uh, Tinternet was key out here in Kurdistan tonight, watching the game through the medium of Twitter. It was murder. Uh, you could have joined us. Me and Kev watched it together through the medium uh, and the power of the internet, didn't we, Kevin? You were in Hungary. I was Indeed. in Dalkeith. We made it work. Um, it's incredible that we've got to this point in the show. We're about 20 minutes in and we haven't 
spent any time on the wee man Kyogo, right? Uh, <laughs> we were talking about the, you know the magical performance he gave last year at the same stage of this tournament, and you know he's went out and done it again, Kevin. Uh, we've got a player here that I don't think Celtic fans underestimate or underrate him, but many others in the Scottish game seem to. They don't give him the credit. The guy is an absolute genius. He's superb. And going back to what Liam says, jumping ahead a wee bit further, I'm actually buzzing and I'm looking forward to seeing him in Europe next season because I think that this season for him is all about um, acclimatising to that competition. It was new for him, right? And I think next season, particularly on the back of this, which is looking to be a 30-goal season for him, um, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. How impressed were you with Kyogo today? Oh, massively impressed by him. I don't think he can watch a guy putting a performance like that and not be. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you actually consider last season, he missed so much of it through injury that he was still almost acclimatising a little bit to being a Celtic player this season because he just didn't get that full run last season. So this is his first full season in the team, largely injury-free up till now. And, you know, you watch him week in, week out, and he maybe doesn't score every week because he, he you know, he, he does have a few games here and there, but he doesn't. But it's his movement off the ball that is second to none in the league. The, both these goals today have come through. Well, great combination play, actually. It's the movement of Maeda, actually, for both the goals, as Liam's mentioned, it pulls a defender away. But Maeda can make that run and be great at it. If there's no one following in behind, it's, it's worthless. And Kyogo reads these situations well. He's got the presence of mind and he just gets himself in that right position. And it might even have been McCoy that mentioned it in the, the commentary during the game there. He's got both these goals. He's in around the six-yard area. So it's six or eight yards out, dead centre, which is exactly where a striker wants to be because he's not going to miss from there. And, uh, you know, it's it's those things. I think he gets a bit of a... I don't know if it's a, a bad write-up at times in the Scottish press because he's not a typical Scottish or British striker. I mean, they want to see bulldozer up front or something like that. But as a, I think he's I think he's extremely well suited to the way Ange wants to play the game with having a mobile, intelligent forward. And I think that, yeah, once we get back into Europe next season, he's a player that can come to the fore as well because he's got a game that I think does suit playing in European competition. I think he'll he'll get joy against European defences. And today, you know, he gets two really clear chances after missing a couple in the first half. He takes them. He doesn't stop. He keeps on going. He's in there for the next one and the next one. Two goals and two successive League Cup finals. That's fantastic. He's won, he's won both those games for us. Um, I cannot speak highly enough of him at the moment. No. And you know, another wee touch of class from Ange Postecoglou who gets uh, every member of his backroom team up on the, the via play podium. Uh, with a trophy there, just to give them a bit of credit. The man is just sheer class, isn't he, Ange Postecoglou? But we're talking about Kyogo just, just a wee moment ago there, Liam. And he's a guy, again, that, that you know and knew a lot about. Um, I make it 24 goals, I think, this season he's scored. It's a, mm. it's a tremendous return. And uh, there's been a few disappointments along the way. He didn't make the World Cup squad, for example. I mean, what, what's the takeover in Japan at the moment with the success of Kyogo? Obviously, Hitachi is having the season of his career. Um, Maeda, he was stuck by him today and he, he turned in a really good performance and then of course you've got you know, Awata coming on and, and really in all the cameos I've seen he looks like he's going to be the next in a, in a long line hopefully of tremendous Japanese signings Yeah, I mean the, um, the, the going back to the World Cup, it was pretty much agreed over here there was a couple of omissions that surprised people, but the biggest shock was Kyogo um, because when they had the shortlist for the Japanese Player of the Year, he was the only one that was included in that shortlist but wasn't in the World Cup squad. Right. So I think that kind of tells you something. Um, and the the thing with Kyogo as well, I do wonder if it's a bit of a... Now, again, not saying he's as good a player as him, but I wonder if there's a bit of the Henrik Larsson kind of mentality of how we think about him, because he's that good that it's just kind of expected. Mm. But the amount of times during the Martin O'Neill era where I would go to games and Larson would get two or three goals, but in the pub that night, you'd be talking about what a great game Yusuf Haran had or uh, Johan Mialbe had because 
Like, like, well, of course, Larson scored a hat trick. He's Henrik Larson, so you just mm-hmm. kind of mm-hmm. take it for granted. And I do wonder if there's an element of that with Kyogo now that it's just expected that he's going to score a couple of goals every game. And I also think it speaks a lot about the humility of the man that now he never publicly said anything about getting left out of that World Cup squad, but he must have been raging, right? Yeah. He must have been, right? Um, and today he gets subbed while he's on two goals, looking at potentially getting a hat trick in a final, which you know a, a lot of players, a lot of great players, will never do in their career. And he was on for it today, uh, but he gets subbed because the manager decides tactically it's time for a change. And Kyogo just goes off, smiles, salutes the crowd, gives a thank you, off he goes. Five minutes later, Morelos gets hooked and he's he's booting water bottles and throwing a tantrum, looking like he's spitting the dummy out. You know, it's like, again, standards. It's levels. Standards. It really is. Uh, it definitely is. Um, I'm really keen to get the thoughts of the viewers. About 800 strong fact. More than that, heading towards 900 here on the post-match. I think most of you probably went to, to watch the celebrations first and that's totally understandable. Um, So let's bring some of your comments in, shall we? Being the bastard, um, Andrew Johnson is my... Do you like what I did there? Uh, Andrew Johnson is my new favourite player. What happens, Kevin, is my eyesight is so bad, I can't read that until I click on it. Um, (laughs) Good. (laughs) You could have some fun with that. It's the names. It just blends in. Uh, Good technique, no fear. Alistair Johnson was tremendous today, and he's getting a lot of credit in the comment section. Uh, CJ as well, Alistair Johnson, what a machine he was in the dying minutes. That's when you're looking at players, by the way, and I'm going to talk about defence a wee bit because it's not looking for negatives, you know, not, not it wasn't perfect today. And I thought Starfield was brilliant up to that moment where he has a daft couple of moments in his own box, Kevin, that you mentioned. And if he can remove that from his game, yeah, you've got no complaints. I remember back to the game at Ibrox where we beat them 2-1. It was the game when Ramsey opened the scoring, right? And uh, Carter Vickers ends up scoring the winner. And leading up to that game, there was loads of talk about uh, the fact that we weren't strong enough in defence, Kevin, right? And they were focusing on the two centre-halves. And on that occasion at Ibrox, Rangers threw a lot into their attack and we shored it up. We dealt with everything. You know, every high ball, we won it. Every tackle, we won it. And that's what Starfield was good at. That's what he's excellent at, the defensive side of it. If he gets a wee bit of time, right, and he doesn't get the angle first time he looks for it, and he tries to dink it over a player in his own box, and we're all sitting with our hearts in his mitt, it's a cup final when he's doing that. So we just need to get him. And by the way, he can remove that kind of stuff from his game. So I've got no real fear that he can't do that. I thought in the second half, Taylor's use of the ball was poor. Um, It wasn't the same force in the second half. He was second to too many balls. i seen him at the end of the game uh, talking to another player and he was talking about maybe he was having problems with his uh, hammies or something. I'm not quite sure if he was carrying a wee injury or a strain because obviously that was the one part of the the defence that we couldn't bring on an out-and-out left back. We spoke about it before the game, Liam. Uh, And that's maybe why he finished the game. So I'm not going to go in too hard on anybody. We've just won the cup. But then you look at Johnson. And they're trying to turn the screw on us and he's just getting rifled in there on a booking, but he's brilliant. And that that really get I don't know, it seems to fill the crowd with more enthusiasm. It must feed into the team as well, Kev. And I, I know I'm overreacting about a guy that's maybe only played eight games for Celtic, but I think we've, we've found a, a real successor to Juranovic. As I said earlier, I feel a wee bit sorry for Tony, but Johnson's a proper player. Brilliant. Superb today. Ah, he's a fantastic player. Um, I've said this on some of the, the previous shows that he's slotted in as if he's been with us for seasons already. You know, he's 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 not looking like a new player that's coming in and finding his way. He's just come in, he's slotted in and been such a good replacement that you almost forget the guy that he's replaced already, who was a a bronze medal winner at the World Cup. Yeah. You know, he's he's come in and done that good of a job. That tackle that he made on Kent just after he's been booked was phenomenal and it's one where you, you you are watching it a little bit between the cracks in your fingers because you're thinking if he slightly missed times this he's off and there's only five minutes to go and they've, they've got the ascendancy then he just times it brilliantly wins the ball goes out of play kills their momentum once again 
and he did that so many times actually in the second half. Mm-hmm. He was he was phenomenal, and that's the one I think I saw you kind of doing the, the Chris Iyer <laughs> celebration. Almost I forgot that you realised that you could it. see me. I, I didn't realise. <laughs> I completely forgot. Oh, I so I'm glad I was kind of behaving myself. Um, <laughs> well, not fully, not for the whole <laughs> for that half. <laughs> I can look with a few. Uh, Unusual words coming out there. <laughs> Sometimes, though, Kev, right? If you go back to the higher scenario where he used to celebrate tackles and stuff, sometimes yeah. when you are under a caution a wee bit, all it takes, Liam, is for the defender to win a 50 50 and do it, you know, with a bit of, you know, gumption. And it just spreads, it gives everybody a boost. And I thought Johnson was great at that today. I mean, that tackle was just, as as Kevin says, that was magnificent, especially after just having been booked, having the confidence to do that with that precision. Um, but just, but my, my highlight for Johnson today was just before that, when one of that other mob takes a liberty and puts Rio Hatati out of the game, and Johnson sprints to confront the, the offender. And I just thought, you know what? Is it, is it professional? No. Is it... Is it gentlemanly conduct? No, but by God, you love to see that from players. You do. That you kind do. of, uh, that sort of, you know, that that kind of Roy Aitken kind of like take no, take no nonsense. Just get right in and say, "What are you doing, picking on my mate?" You know, I like to, yeah. I like to see that. And it's good that Johnson's yeah, I... got that to his game because you do, you need to have that wee bit of nastiness to be a, a defender in in Scotland. I think. Absolutely. Do you know there's one criticism I would make of our team at times is that we don't do things like that enough. It's mm. too many times one of our players will take us a dullion, as we say, and we just let it go. But you see Johnson there now, and he is he's right over there. Every he's time. just in the door, Kevin. And he and he's, he's the guy doing the it. Door. Loved it. Exactly. Yeah. So you can see that not only have we signed a really good player, but we've signed a, a really good character and a leader, I think. Because that's that's what you want to see. So aye, it's um Yes, it's great to see. <laughs> We've gone from a situation where we had very few leaders when Ange came in, um, but it seems as though he, he, you know, he breeds them uh, because we've got loads of them now, and it's fantastic because, yeah, it's a bit of heart. People have got to remember this is this is sport. This is what happens. The emotions run high, and they run high in the players as well, and it can give the other team the upper hand if they think they're bullying you. Celtic teams in the past, pre Martin O'Neill, I felt we got bullied a hell of a lot. Um, it's great to see that the Ange team, for all the flair and the entertaining players and the creativity, we're not going to be bullied. Um, and I think Johnson fits that model. He's, he's sure to become a fan's favourite. Please, everybody, um, enjoy the rest of your night. Celtic are the League Cup winners once again, second in a row. Um, is it the first part of a historic treble? I hope it is. Um, and I just think that, you know, we're at a point in Angie's progression as a Celtic manager that anything is possible. We talked about it last night. We, you know, we get carried away when we're in company with other Celtic fans. Can Ange do something in Europe? Can he get us to a European final? That's what we're thinking. He's given us that belief. He's given us the belief, Kevin, for you and I to sit at halftime against Real Madrid, who I think had won five at the last eight European Cups or something, thinking we're going to get a result here. That was just the season. That's the belief he's given us. We've gone out and we've won. He gave us the confidence that before that game, yeah, we sat and discussed that we could win it, and it wasn't bravado coming out at any point. It was there was a genuine belief that we could do something. There was a part of the fairy tale thing that it was our first game back in the Champions League in five years or whatever it was, and it was at home and it was Madrid. But Ange also just gave you a genuine belief that. We're a good team. We can compete at that level, and we did for an hour. So, I, we if we keep on progressing at this rate, you're going to have that same level of confidence going back into next season. Yeah, the sky's the limit. Listen, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you so much. I know that uh, there's loads to be done this evening in terms of a wee swally and a celebration. Liam, unfortunately for him, is going to yeah. have uh, have to go to his kit because he's got his work in a few hours. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a school night. I've got to be up in five hours to go to school. Five hours. Well, listen, it's been a fantastic oh, weekend. Topped off by Celtic winning the League Cup. 
I still call it the League Cup because you know it's the Skull Cup to me. I, I stopped calling it the uh, the Skull Cup and went to League Cup because we've we've had Premier, we've had Coca Cola via play. I lose track, um, so I'm just calling it the League Cup. Well done to Angie and the boys. Well done, everybody. Thank you for getting involved and continuing to support the channel. Uh, we smashed through 11 million views on YouTube this afternoon, so thank you for that. It's an incredible statistic, and uh, we will continue to give you great content on a daily basis. All that's left for me to say is Kevin McCluskey and Liam Carrigan. Thank you once again for joining me on a Celtic State of Mind. Thank you.